So this is this video is meant to be a, a relatively short introduction to how you can study weather model uncertainty in LECRIB. Um, there's been a rule of thumb for well many many years that weather models can't be trusted beyond I don't know three or four or five days depending upon who you speak to. Um, so that's it's kind of an old-fashioned way of looking at uncertainty. Uh, definitely, definitely, there are no weather models which exist where, where you can trust what they say to a great deal of certainty at the 16-day point. Um, but depending upon the weather systems and the weather model and where you are in the world, uh, they have you can trust them more or less. <laughs> and being able to determine what those what the, the level of certainty is, uh, is a very viable thing. So the first thing we'll do is look at the luckrib.com site. Uh, if you go to the tutorials section, there are two articles uh, which may be useful. So there's two, two models or two classes of models in Luckrib which help you study uncertainty. Uh, the first one is the NBM, the National Blend of Models, Oceanic. Uh, so this tutorial uh, goes through some of the details about this model. Uh, as far as I know, Luckrib is the only application offering this data, and it may be among the best uh, ocean weather, ocean wind data available. Uh, but yeah, this article goes through. It talks about some of the principles behind the NBM, the National Blend of Models and the probability wins that it's offering. Uh, so it's quite interesting. The, the other article, the other article I'll mention briefly is this ensemble standard, standard deviation model. So uh, in an ensemble model, uh, a weather model will be running itself more than one time. So the general idea is that uh, the weather model starts with some in initial conditions, which is meant to capture the atmosphere at some point, and then it perturbs those conditions uh, a little bit to help generate uh, a family of initial conditions which captures the actual conditions. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty involved, even in the initial stages of capturing what's happening right now. So with a weather simulation, it captures, it starts at a point which is meant to be the current conditions across the world and then using those conditions it does a simulation to generate forecasts. Uh, but if you have errors in the initial, con initial, initial conditions then the simulation will produce you know, less and less meaningful results. So in an ensemble it produces 30 answers where each of those answers is a reasonable guess of what the initial conditions were. So in an ensemble model, uh, the, weather's, the weather model is running uh, itself. It will generate 30 in the G. So this article goes through uh, how a weather, uh, a weather model ensemble works. Uh, if you're interested in studying uncertainty in weather models, this article is uh, definitely worthwhile. Uh, so rather than going through this in a lot of detail, uh, I'll <laughs> refer you to this article online and I'll do a, a, a little demo uh, in the app. So here we are on the Mac version of LuckRib. Uh, all of this works on the iPad and iPhone as well, uh, but I happen to be on the Mac. So I'll choose an area. Uh, we'll study some weather for the North Pacific area here. So I first want to do a GEFS uh, ensemble download. So I'll choose a new request. And in the ensemble area, I'll choose the GE, well, I'll do a GFS ensemble. And I want pressure and wind for the, the mean, uh, the average, as well as standard deviations and the control member. The, the control member is uh, more or less the GFS uh, answer. 
So we, we have GFS, uh, the average, and the standard deviations of pressure and wind, and allows for data for 16 days, and download that. Okay, so the idea is that this color image, so I'm, I'm now showing wind barbs, the, the average wind barbs, the wind barbs uh, for what more or less corresponds to GFS. Uh, and a color image which shows you the standard deviation, which is the uh, the level of certainty or the level of agreement among the uh, the ensemble. Uh, the GEFS ensemble contains 30 wind members, and we'll, we'll look at those soon. Uh, it may be hard to see in the video, but the white wind barbs are the is the control member is the GEFS answer and the black wind barbs are the average. So I'll advance the forecast uh, further and look at this quickly. So the, the colors are showing you the level of uh, certainty, the standard deviation. So at the beginning of the forecast, the colors are pretty much you know all clear, the, a little bit of blue in some areas. Uh, and as you move the cursor around, you can read the text off to find out what the what the range of certainty is in these areas. Uh, but the wind barbs are pretty much all lined up. And then as we move into the forecast, uh, you can see here that the wind barbs are pretty much all lined up still. Uh, at the very end of the forecast, uh, we have wind barbs from the west and north. So that's indicating a large degree of uncertainty in these areas. And you can also also see that through the standard deviation colors uh, growing and growing in, in, in intensity. So this gives you a much, a much more refined answer about how much you can trust this forecast in different areas. Uh, there are areas of this forecast at 16 days uh, which are you know so random that you you can't really trust the answer at all and other areas down here in the trade winds where there's much more uniform answer so even at 16 days into the forecast uh, as you would expect the trade wind areas are pretty stable so the uh, rule of thumb where which says simply that you can't trust the forecast beyond three or four days uh, we can do much better than that these days. That's an old-fashioned way of looking at things. Uh, and the study of uh, uncertainty is a really useful thing to do uh, if you're relying on these forecasts. So yeah, that's the GEFS ensemble, uh, quickly, with a standard deviation. Uh, another way of looking at this, which may be useful uh, when you're on land uh, studying uh, departure for a sailing voyage uh, where you have access to high-speed internet uh, would be to download the entire ensemble. So we'll do that quickly. Uh, we'll go back and change this request. Uh, we'll change the model to be the G GFS ensemble with all surface wind members. And for the parameters, what I want to do is I'll toggle on all of the winds uh, so I have all 30 wind members now, and again, it lasts for 16 days. Let's download that. Okay, so now we have more wind members, uh, and you can ask to see them all. So the GEFS ensemble does calculate its statistics based on 30 different runs uh, of the GFS model uh, and each of the runs is perturbed a little bit in some meaningful way to uh, try and generate a spread of outcomes and what we're seeing here is the wind wind barbs for all 30 members and there are some points in this forecast uh, towards the very beginning where all of the answers agree very closely uh, as you would expect and as you move through the forecast, there are some areas where there's more there's growing uncertainty. So in this area, the directional uncertainty uh, is, well, the whole compass. The wind direction can be anywhere at this cursor location. 
uh, whereas in other areas of his forecast, the directions are quite certain still. Like this direction is east, you know, east southeast to east. And if you re read the text, it shows you uh, that in more detail. So depending upon where you are, the directions are very certain or very uncertain. And you can move through the forecast to see how that changes. Uh, if you're doing a departure planning exercise, uh, this might be a good model to download to just give you, uh, you could have, for example, you can have the weather router in LuckRib uh, work with this file to generate 30 routes and then look at the spread of those routes to see how certain you are in the, in the departure. So that's really useful. Uh, and quickly going back to the, the online web, I showed you two articles. The first article was the NBM Oceanic uh, Winds. So let's do that model quickly as well. And you should read those articles if you want more detail on all of these things. So I'll go to NBM Oceanic. Uh, for the parameters, I want to download the pressure and wind, and I also want probability winds. So there's four probability, different probability winds available. And uh, I'll choose 10 kilometer resolution for the full forecast period. Here we go. So this is a 40 megabyte file. Uh, normally you wouldn't, well, I, uh, I'm asking for the full resolution over a quite large area. Okay, so <laughs> it's, there's a lot of data packed into this file. Uh, but for each point, at any point in the forecast, it's producing five different wind speeds. There's the average wind speed among all of the, the models that are part of this blend. Uh, and there's a lot of models involved in this data. So it's giving you the average wind speed among all of the different models which are input to the blend, as well as it indicates the spread among the models uh, for each point. So for example, at this point, the median wind speed is 30 knots. Uh, and there's a 25% chance that the wind will be less than 28.9 and a 10% chance that the wind is less than 28.6. So that indicates, and then and on the other side, there's a 25% chance the wind is more than 31 and a 10% chance the wind is more than 32. So the spread of the wind at this point uh, is only 28.6 to 32. So they're all high winds, there's a four knot difference. So among all these models, you, you can be very certain that, that you know, there's strong wind there. Everything agrees, all the models agree that there's strong wind there. Uh, as we go further into the forecast, we'll do something similar. Uh, so over here, now, the spread of the wind values, there's a 10% chance the wind is less than 9 and a 10% chance the wind is greater than 28. So the spread of these winds is 28 knots, almost 29 knots to 9 knots. So there's a 20 knot range in these wind speeds, uh, which is an indication that the certainty of this forecast, the average forecast, is very low. Uh, let's open up the mediogram. So here's the mediogram. Uh, at that point around here. Uh, oops. So this uh, blue line corresponds to the forecast time. And, and we're seeing that, yeah, the, the lower the 10% band is, very, is, is, is way down here, the upper band is way up here. So there's a wide range in certainty at this point. Uh, whereas earlier in the forecast, the bands are very close together. Uh, and this varies. If you go down to the trade winds, it should be much narrower. Yeah. So these are all, you know, even towards the end of the forecast, there's only, what, about a 15 knot range, uh, which is much better. So yeah, th there's, there are ways of studying uncertainty. The old school ways of just thinking of forecasts as being 
you know, pretty good for a couple of days and beyond three or four days, you can't trust them. Uh, that's uh, a bit old fashioned. We can do better than that now. So yeah, there's a couple articles up on the luckrib.com site. Uh, go through them. Let me know what you think. Uh, <laughs> thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.